Hello everybody. Today we are going to review the movie The Sisters Brothers. Uh, so this is about two brothers who are trying to track down a... Uh, during the gold rush in the 1850s, I believe is what it said at the very beginning of the movie. And it actually does say here, I don't know why this closed out on me. Uh, so let me just reload that for... Oh, come on. Reload this. Oh, yeah, so during the 1850s, they're chasing down a gold prospector, it says. But, uh, so anyway, this man that they're trying to hunt has this formula for finding gold. No, I'm not sure what kind of actual chemical he uses in order to make the gold glow at night, but it's uh, very detrimental to humans anyway. Looks like it could possibly be uh, corrosive. Uh, severely corrosive um, from the looks of the one scene and we will get into that so it actually starts out with them looking uh, so they appear to be assassins or bounty hunters I thought actually uh, by just the way the movie started when they were looking for a certain someone and they were just kind of it seemed like it was a dead or alive type mission because they yell at them uh, we are the sisters brothers and if you come out with your hands up um, nobody has to die and obviously in the wild, wild west, that usually doesn't go the way <laughs> anybody says it's going to go, and it ends up in this big gunslinging battle at the very beginning of the movie. Uh, and the two brothers are played by John C. Riley and Joaquin Phoenix, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Now, I could be wrong on that, because I've heard many different people pronounce it many different ways. So I don't think anybody would actually know unless he's said it himself in an interview or on live TV somewhere. And if he has, please uh, maybe clip it down below in the comments if you can find a clip of him actually saying his own name. Uh, so these guys play uh, John C. Riley and uh, Joaquin Phoenix play Eli Sisters and Charlie Sisters. And it looks like they're working with a character named John Morris, who was played by Jake Gyllenhaal, in order to find Herman Kermy Warm. Oh, that's a name. <clears throat> um, played by Riz Ahmed. And they are pretty much the entire movie. They're about a town behind the two of them. And John Morris is leaving them letters in every town that they go to, saying that this is where he has this guy. And... He's basically being very suave with the whole situation, making um, making Herman trust him, right? And then Herman eventually finds out what uh, his intentions are, and it ends up actually that what the hell is that um, that John uh, that John ends up just helping uh, Herman in the end of it and running away from the sister brothers, uh, but to no avail, they do end up catching up. And then when they catch them, they decide to cut a deal with them, actually. So now all four of them are in on this gold partnership together, basically. And it's at this point that uh, I would definitely for sure Charlie gets a little too greedy the one night and dumps all of the... Uh, tries to dump all the solution into the water to make all the gold shiny uh, and ends up burning himself and also putting so much of it into the water that it ends up burning the other two guys, uh, John and Herman. So John and Herman end up both dying. Uh, John ends up shooting himself because he can't take the pain anymore and Herman just passes away because his burns were so bad that he just wasn't going to live through it. Uh, so now it seems that Charlie and Eli have all the money and everything to himself, or everything to themselves. Uh, and they were supposed to be giving the plans for this miracle solution uh, back to <clears throat> the Commodore that they worked for. And I believe they were part of the... The, the Northern Army, now, I guess, so the North and South were still divided at this point, because it's the 1800s, right? Um, I can't remember when, 
when was the actual... Now, geez, I forgot what year the actual Civil War was, but clearly it wasn't in the 1850s. It must have been a little bit after that. Was it... See, I don't want to say now, because it could have been... It was definitely after that, obviously, if they were working for the North and the other two guys were trying to go down south to build this, I guess, kind of proper democracy type thing where everybody was uh, had the same rights and stuff. And uh, it was funny because Charlie kind of laughs at that. Um, and I think we're still kind of fighting for that to this day to have equal rights and stuff. So it's actually, it actually is kind of funny that um, somebody even had that kind of a thought way back, God, over 200 years ago. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's just kind of funny to think of. I guess it wouldn't be over 200 years, would it? 1850, 1950, that would be 100 years. Oh, yeah, I guess 2000 and... 2005 would be another hmm I'm trying to do the math on that but I can't even think right now on, on that kind of math um, but anyhow a long time ago I don't think quite 200 years I could be I could have had my math right the first time and now I'm just overthinking it but who knows um, anyhow where what was I just saying before I tried to do a math equation <laughs> um, oh yeah right about uh, proper democracy and equal rights and stuff like that. He's trying to make a better community wherever he's going. Um, obviously doesn't go the way he wanted it to because he ends up dying. So now... Oh god, why can't I think of... So they were working for the North. Um, right, the Commodore. Um, was that right? Commodore? Oh good lord, now I've lost my whole train of thought. Do, 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 do. Yes, the Commodore. Right, okay. I was right. Uh, so now they know that the Commodore is going to be coming after them uh, because they have have basically sworn that they are out of the game. They're not going to kill anybody anymore unless they absolutely have to. And obviously the Commodore sends his men after them constantly for I don't know how long. While, basically while they're trying to get to him, he's sending men after them to kill them. So it's kind of like this battle constantly, and now Charlie only has one arm because he ended up losing part of his arm in the very beginning of the movie, or not the very beginning, but after the scene, his the burns were too severe to even keep the arm, so he ends up having to get sawed off because there was <laughs> medical technology was not quite as uh, advanced as it is today. You could even get a replacement arm now if you needed it, but I guess back then things were kind of limited. <laughs> Let's just say that much. Um, so yeah, he's down to one arm, so he can't shoot. He's kind of relying on the protection of Eli now instead of the other way around because it seemed like Charlie was the protector, even though he was the younger brother. He seemed to be the almost, yeah, kind of like the older brother, even though he was the younger brother, which is, I mean, sometimes happens. Um, depending on, I guess, the attitude towards certain situations, I suppose. Because um, Charlie was definitely the one who did most of the killing in the beginning, and then Eli did most of the killing uh, near the end. But I think I think Eli found some of the killing unnecessary um, as to what Charlie was doing, and I think Eli's killing was maybe in his head more necessary because it was they were defending for their own life rather than just going after people and f fulfilling contracts and so on and so forth. So I guess that kind of makes sense because he had a little bit better of a moral compass than Charlie, that's for sure. And they did talk about their dad a little bit, and I guess Charlie killed their dad when they were really young. And it's not really... Um, I don't think they go too much into detail about who their dad was other than a drunk and Charlie's kind of um, definitely taken on some of his dad's uh, worse attributes I would say um, I guess it's kind of hinted at maybe he was an abusive father um, to them and to the mother possibly that's kind of what I got out of it as to maybe why 
Charlie would have wanted him dead, and it didn't seem like Eli had really much, you know, sadness or remorse for um, Charlie killing their father, only that he wasn't the one who did it, and he feels like he should have been. <clears throat> so that was kind of an interesting uh, concept uh, that they didn't really touch on that more, but I guess it wasn't really, you know, hugely vital to the whole storyline because it's more about them as adults, right? So they didn't need any real flashback moments just kind of to keep you guessing, I guess, about that part and kind of form your own opinion as to what could have happened. Uh, so they do end up making it back to um, the Commodore. And it's funny because they're, like, they're wondering why nobody has been sent out and it's been about four days. And then they find out that uh, when they get there, the Commodore died. So now they know why nobody has been sent after them for a lengthy period of time, because the Commodore is dead. And I think Charlie wanted to kill him himself and take over as Commodore, but now that he's died, I guess he's kind of at peace and just kind of gets out of the town. And at the very end of the movie, it actually ends more happily than I thought it was going to, because I thought there was going to be some huge shootout, and the two of them were going to die, similar to, like, uh, Butch Cassidy at the Sundance Kid. Um, but they just go back to their mums, and she almost ends up shooting them. Um, and then she realizes that it's her sons, and they've come home. And she says, if, you got, if you're trying to hide from somebody, I don't want you here, go away. And they say no. And by this point, we already know that they've shot their way through everybody else. There is nobody else chasing them now. So they are free men, free to do as they please. So it kind of shows this little heartwarming scene between them and their mother at the very end, and them uh, kind of, I guess, reminiscing in their heads about the old days sort of thing. And you can see uh, Eli laying on his bed from when he was a child. So it's a very kind of, yeah, very happy, heartwarming ending to this movie, actually, which I was kind of surprised about. Uh, but, you know, John C. Riley is probably more well known for his comedies but he is a very diverse actor as far as that goes and walking phoenix just fits i mean he can do anything the guy's like a weird amoeba when it comes to acting he just can do really any role well and i think this cast just had a very definitely between john c Riley, walking phoenix and jake gyllenhaal there was definitely really good chemistry between the three of them um Riz Ahmed, I would say, probably was the odd man out in this. But, I mean, I know he was kind of vital to the story, but he didn't really feel like... He kind of felt like he was just there, as opposed to the other three of them actually felt like they could have been, like, a real serious, like, gunslinging group if they had have gotten together in those times. Um, they could have been, like, a really good trio, for sure. <clears throat> Um, and the other guy cut it would have just been like a tag along, I guess, because he was more brains than brawn, <clears throat> I suppose. They do almost get caught in the very beginning, I guess, when the first guy shows up to town to, I guess, bring them back to the Commodore or probably kill them, to be honest, uh, because he tells Eli to come out of the house <clears throat> and uh, throw his guns down and stuff. And I recognized the voice of that guy. I know I did. Now, whether they actually have him here. Yeah, oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, Richard Brake played Rex, which was the guy that actually came to get them, the first guy that came to get them um, from, for the Commodore in the very beginning. And I knew I recognized his voice because he has a very distinct voice, so it's kind of cool to see him in a Western as well because um, he's, he, I think he's a very diverse actor as well. He can play pretty much any part. He kind of seems to be more like the part of the evil guy, but he do, does a very good job of playing a different sort of evil in every movie, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, I have to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. I think I've given my criticisms of the movie as best as I could. I don't really... Th this movie certainly wasn't bad. It had a very good storyline, uh, good chemistry between the actors, so I don't really know if I have any bad chemist or bad comments or um it's a word i'm looking for 
yeah, I don't really have any criticisms of the movie. I guess it's just kind of an 8.5. As far as westerns go, I guess, maybe if I was comparing it to some of the other westerns I've seen, it wasn't quite as good. Could have had maybe a little bit more action in it, I suppose. But, I mean, that wasn't really part of the story. I guess they were trying to basically hunt down this one guy. So, as far as that goes, the storyline was spot on. Because they don't maybe get out of it exactly what they wanted, but they do get a lot of gold. So, And now they have the formula to find all the gold. So, I would say they're probably winning at life. And uh, they'll definitely be able to have a better one now. Because uh, I don't know how much gold is worth now, but it was certainly worth a lot back then. So, uh, anyhow, that's it. Uh, read the movie now. So, as always, like, share, subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this film if you've seen it. If not, definitely go watch it if you're a fan of westerns, because it is a worthwhile watch for that type of movie. And it, it actually was surprising to see John C. Riley and Joaquin Phoenix and Jake Gyllenhaal in a western, because I don't think this type of western, I mean, like the gunslinging kind of type, because I thought from the previous it was going to be more of a comedy movie, but this movie was more serious than I thought it was going to be, which was a pleasant surprise. So uh, that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.